We begin with what the United Nations is calling a code red for humanity. A sweeping new report says the climate is changing at an unprecedented rate and without swift and drastic cuts to greenhouse gas emissions, the world is on track for catastrophe. The report from the International Panel on Climate Change involves the work of 234 scientists and more than 14,000 studies. They all come to one unequivocal conclusion humans are fueling climate change. The report also shows the world has warmed by about 1.1 degrees Celsius since the late 19th century, and it's likely to surpass the 1.5 degree mark in the next two decades. The world is already feeling the impact. From this summer's deadly heat wave in British Columbia to wildfires, droughts and devastating floods worldwide, those kinds of events are projected to be even more severe as the planet warms. Heather Yerkes West has tonight's top story on what all of this means for Canada and what experts say is needed to avoid the worst case scenario. On the prairies, the summer has been long and hard. They say in this family farm, my job is to worry. So I worry a lot. Climate change is keeping Ian McCreary up at night. He's never seen drought conditions this bad. If we don't turn the corner on this, our children's opportunity to farm and to uh, <clears throat> live in parts of the world that we currently live in will be much more difficult. As we put more greenhouse gases and especially carbon dioxide, the major greenhouse gas into the atmosphere, so we're increasing its concentration, um, we are going to change the climate. What scientists have been warning for decades is now happening before our eyes. A more than 3,000 page report from the United Nations Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change says the earth is getting warmer and we are already paying the price. For Canada, the report projects reduction in 46 days with snowfall in all but northern Canada, a consistent signal toward an increase in duration and intensity of droughts, a clear increase in the intensity and frequency of hot extremes, and future increases in fire weather. Basically, the path we're on now is one that threatens all of the systems that sustain us. So whether that be breathable air, drinkable water, um, predictable climates, all of that is at risk. In B.C., a summer of heat and fire has already cost lives. There was more than 500 people that died due to the effects of, of heat. Some of my colleagues in the interior of B.C. have certainly have seen a lot more uh, uh, injuries uh, due, to, due to smoke inhalation, uh, increase in asthma and COPD. This is not just a new normal. The science is clear that things will get worse. But how much worse depends on what happens now and whether countries like Canada can effectively lower the carbon emissions linked directly with climate change. I would say it's fair to say that, uh, that none of us are, are doing enough right now. And we've all got to take another look at what we are doing and figure out how we can improve and do more. Even, he says, if that includes raising the price on carbon, on his farm, the livelihood of the next generation is now at stake. Heather Urex West, Global News, Calgary. We continue our coverage into that report by the UN's Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change. The co-author of the report is Shubin Zong, a climatologist with Environment Canada, and he joins us now from Vaughan, Ontario. Dr. Zong, the key finding is the world is warming at a pace that is unprecedented, at that, and the evidence is obvious in the droughts and wildfires we're currently experiencing. In your report, you say it's only getting worse. Can you explain that and why this should be a wake-up call? Well, when you look at changes in the uh, weather extremes, it is happening everywhere, not just something happening in Canada, but it's everywhere across the globe, in every region in the globe. So we are seeing increase in hot temperatures, in hot extremes, in every region around the world. So that is a really, really big wake up call because it's not just something that you can see somewhere, but it's everywhere. But many countries, including Canada, are dependent on fossil fuels. What needs to change? Well, we need to find a way such that we can uh, reduce our dependence on fossil fuels. We need to use new technologies uh, to, uh, to, to reduce these dependencies because no matter what, we, just, we need to find a way to reduce the emissions. That's the only way. Otherwise, with uh, more emissions, the temperature will just get rise and since we are getting much worse and worse. Is it possible to limit global warming at this point, or is it too late? Uh, it's not completely too late. Uh, we are close, but it's not too late. As long as we have 
as long as we do a deep and sustained reduction, we shall still be fine. There's still time to act. What ways can human beings change their behavior to make this a better place? We need to think about how we have our life, how we live our life. We need to think about how we use our energies, perhaps even what we eat and what we do. So, uh, so it, it is uh, important that we need to think about what's, what is the best for our life and also what is the best for our future generations. Are there specific examples that you can show us about how we can change our behavior? Uh, there are many different kind of examples we, we can think about. And all are centered with the, uh, with the reduction of emissions. For example, there is an increasing demand and also increasing development in renewable energies, both in terms of solar energies, wind energies, and there are also other kind of like a hydro energy and so on. If there was a way for you to sum this all up, how much of a wake-up call is this for the world and for Canada? Uh, this is a huge wave call. You see that uh, we are facing COVID. And, uh, and in the past, nobody probably was thinking that COVID is really, I mean, the, the kind of magnitude of damage that uh, uh, this kind of disease can cause to us. But now, with the climate change, this is something perhaps several magnitudes bigger down the road. So this is a huge wake up call. Dr. Zhang, thank you so much for your time. Thank you.